I don't know if I love or hate this personally, the train wreck that was All Stars 1. So, you know, people are gonna be gagged when they see her. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are doing something a little bit different. A few weeks ago on my community tab, I put a little poll asking you what you guys want to see from me. And a few of you said you wanted to know some drag race gossip. So today we are gonna give you some backstage tea about RuPaul's Drag Race, all Stars 9, letting you know who's in the cast and my thoughts. Now, this is a spoiler-free channel. We will not be breaking down who plays where and what. And honestly, I want to just enjoy the show as a viewer when it comes on TV. So for now, let's just talk about the things that are behind the scenes and some little bit of gossip. So get your teacup ready and let's get sipping. So before we get into the cast, let's talk about the rumors. So... All Stars 9 filmed in July 2023, so several months ago, and that is why we are now hearing a little bit about what is going on. It is said that All Stars 9 is going to be a non-elimination season. In fact, they are probably going to be going back to the format of All Stars 7 with the all-winner season. Now, the reason why this is, is supposedly because for All Stars 8, they were actually casting All Stars 8 and All Stars 9 at the same time. One was supposed to be a fan favorite season, one of them was supposed to be an early out season, but honestly, there were so many queens that said that they did not want to be part of the cast because they had more to lose to be on the show than to gain. Additionally, it is really expensive. So what they ended up doing was taking both of those casts and bringing them together to make what we got as All Stars 8. That's why you had so many fan favorites like Jimbo and Candy with some really early outs like James Mansfield. It was very much a mixed bag. And honestly, the audience didn't really love it as much as some of the other seasons. But this has all to do with the queen. They wanted top tier queens for All Stars 9. And the only way to get top tier queens for All Stars 9 was to make it a non-elimination season. So the other thing we know, when you come back for All Stars, everybody is expecting a glow up. And since everybody's expecting a glow up, all the queens end up spending so, so much money, making this a questionable choice for some queens. Do you go back, get a little bit of extra fame, get a little bit of notoriety and get a few bookings, but it's gonna cost you a lot of money, or do you decide to skip it and save the money? For season nine, they said that they are gonna give each contestant $20,000 for the runway package. A normal season nowadays, most queens spend around $20,000. This is very different from back in the day. As the seasons go on, queens are spending more and more money. It is said that queens like Gottmik and Jimbo spent close to $100,000 on their package to get ready for the show. So. I am happy they're getting $20,000, but I think this is $20,000 down payment and something tells me that they're gonna be spending a lot more. Similar to season seven, we will also have no lip sync assassins. Aww. That is right, we are done with that twist. I don't know if I love or hate this personally because I do think that the lip sync assassins was cool to bring back some of our old favorite queens. But at the same time, I just didn't see the point. What was in it for those queens? Personally, if they kept the lip sync assassin twist, I think that if the lip sync assassin won, they should have gotten the $10,000. Make it enticing, make it interesting for people to come back as lip sync assassins. But then what we also saw is people like Lagandra Strandra, who have come back as lip sync assassins and said, that's enough for me. I don't need to come back as a contestant because she got her little two minutes of extra fame and she got extra, extra bookings and she doesn't need a full season and to spend the money. That is potentially another reason why they got rid of lip sync assassins. But personally, that I think is maybe reading a little bit too much into it, and it probably just has to do with the format of the show. And the format of the show doesn't necessarily need it anymore if they are doing a similar to season seven. So that is it for the backstage tea. What are your thoughts? Do we like this non-elimination season? Let me know in the comments below. I know why you guys are really here. You guys are really here because you wanna know who's the cast already. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up from season 14, we have Angeria Paris Van Michaels or Angie as she's like to be called, you know, your Southern Belle from the ATL. So a little bit more about Angeria. Angeria on her original season won 
two maxi challenges and one mini challenge. She was also in the bottom two times. She made it to the final episode on her season, which they did a top five the first time they had done that. And she placed somewhere between third and fifth. We don't really know because, well, they didn't really name third, fourth, and fifth. They just made it the final episode where she lost to Willow Pill, who was the winner of season 14. Now, we did see Angeria come back again for All Stars 8, where she was a lip sync assassin. When she came back for All Stars 8, I was a little bit surprised to see her as a lip sync assassin. I say this because Angeria has famously said that she's a park and bark type queen. And for a lip sync assassin, you're usually expecting a splits and dip type queen. Now, I'm happy to see Angeria back. I think that on her season, she had a strong start, but then sort of fizzled out towards the middle end. Personally, I felt like if the season was shorter, like some of the regular Drag Race seasons, she probably would have had a better chance. While season 14 had so many non-elimination episodes, it really dragged out. Fans got a little bit annoyed of that season. People who were your favorites at the beginning weren't your favorites at the end. All in all, I wasn't a fan of season 14 in general. And I think that Angeria probably was a victim a little bit of that season. I'm happy to see her back and I wanna see what she comes back with. We loved Angeria for her personality. She had some, some really iconic confessionals and she had an iconic laugh. So she will definitely be memorable. And I love that she's representing some of the newer seasons because you're gonna get some older queens in this season as well. So it's gonna be a nice mix. All in all, I'm happy to see Angeria back. Let's see what she has to offer. From season 13, we have the trans icon herself, Gottmik. Now Gottmik on her season had two maxi challenge wins and one mini challenge win and was never at the bottom. She placed third slash fourth depending on how you see it but more importantly she won America's heart with her saying so gorge. Gottmik was definitely a makeup queen. She was a fashion queen. She was notably said to have spent one of the most money on her season which I've alluded to and she was definitely at the top 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 of her game. People definitely saw her as a winner and definitely saw her going far. But since coming off the show, she has become super famous. She's been doing photo fashion review for the all winter season. She now even has a viral sort of podcast with Miss Violet Tchotchke called No Barge. And they are kind of like a dynamic duo. I'm so excited to see uh, Gottmik on the show. First of all, Gottmik was such a trailblazer being the first trans man on Drag Race. On top of it, she definitely brought a creative side to the race. It was much more avant-garde, it was both fashion, and she was actually really funny. Now, the thing about Gottmik is that since she was never in the bottom, you never really got to see her perform and lip sync. I had the chance to go see her when I was in Texas uh, for South by Southwest. I will say I was a little bit disappointed in her performance style. She is definitely not the va 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 voom sort of queen. So on this format, I wonder how she is going to perform. I think in the terms of looks, in terms of funny, in terms of makeup, she will do excellent. The question is with such high calibers of queens on this season, will she be able to stand out? I think a lot of people are gonna be excited to see her and I love the representation coming back to the season. So all in all, I'm super excited to see her. Next up we have, isn't she gorgeous? No, she's George's. That is right, we have George's. Now George's is infamously known for being that spicy Latina diva that started drag at only the age of 16. She came on to season 14 and played six slash seven. She had one maxi challenge win and zero mini challenge wins, but infamously had five bottom placements, which made her the lip sync assassin of the season, no doubt about it, because she had won every single one of those lip syncs until the fifth one finally bit her in the ass. As the newly crowned lip sync assassin, we saw her come back to Drag Race on All Stars 8 as a lip sync assassin, where she competed and lost against Lala Ree. Since the show, Georges has been everywhere, and by everywhere, I mean Vegas, baby. That is right, she is now one of the queens on the Vegas tour. You know that she is one of RuPaul's favorites. Remember, she was one of those few queens that got the title 
she's born to do drag. George's on her season was really fun and funny. And I think that uh, she was sometimes a little too quiet at times, but I think it was just because she was overwhelmed with the environment. Because when you see her at shows, when you see her in interviews, when you see her in all of these things, her personality really lights up. On top of it, now she's working consistently and has worked with some of the queens on this season. On top of it, she's got her season 14 sister, Miss Angeria, on the season. So I think she's gonna be definitely a lot more comfortable this time around and can really show her goods. And if she ever makes it to the bottom, we know that she is gonna have a killer lip sync. And you know what? Even though I don't necessarily want to see George's at the bottom, I love to see George's lip sync. So, you know, give or take. I think uh, George's is gonna have a, a very interesting take. She is one of the queens that is probably a little bit lower on the charts compared to some of the other queens that were on here. But either way, I am glad to see George's back. I wanna see what she has to offer and I wanna see if her fashion improved. I wanna see what she's been doing and I would love to see her new 2024 energy. So I can't wait to see what she has to offer. Next up from season 11, we have Plastique Tiara. Now Plastique is originally from Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, but moved to the United States when she was 11 years old. She is infamously the drag child of Miss Alyssa Edwards and part of the House of Edwards. On season 11, she was kind of underrated. She had one maxi challenge win and one mini challenge win and was in the bottom two times. She eventually left the show in eighth place. But since leaving the show, she has blown up on TikTok. All the Gen Zers love her. She is the TikTok queen. She's also one of the queens with the most followers. On top of it, she has been on every Work the World tour and she has been like upping her game. She really gives you that biggest transformation from math to femme and everyone in the world loves to see it. You cannot clock that bitch. She is so good looking. Rumor is, is that they've been asking her for several seasons to come back and she's always said she's not ready, no, this, that, whatever. So I think that this whole non-elimination and giving her some money to be on the show really like roped her in and got her going because she has nothing to lose now. She can come on the show and show her full package, show her full personality and not like fail one challenge and get kicked out way too early like she did on her season. As I said, she's been working and been consistent. She's been everywhere. So you know that she's gotten better since season 11. Remember, we're on season 16, y'all. She's got some years of experience under her belt. So I am so excited to see what she comes up with. I've seen some of her stuff on tour for Work the World, and she is really like stepping it up when it comes to the costumes and things like that. She looks fantastic. All in all, I love Plastic Tiara, and I hope this time she's able to live up to the hype that is around her and let the children have it. Next up from Orlando, Florida, we have Roxy Andrews. Now Roxy Andrews did not only compete once on Drag Race, but competed twice, making this her third time back. The first time we saw Roxy was on season five, where she had two maxi challenge wins and one mini challenge win. She was in the bottom two times, but made it all the way to the finale, coming in second slash third place. We then saw her back on her screens not too long later on All Stars, to the best all-stars in my opinion, where she was part of the infamous Rolaska Talks clique. She had one maxi challenge win and zero mini challenge wins. She had five bottom placements, but was always saved due to her alliance and went from villain to sweetheart overnight. Now, Miss Roxy Andrews became an icon in the drag scene for being the first queen to ever do a wig reveal. And since that moment, at almost every drag bar, there will be at least one queen that will try to do a wig reveal. So you can blame that on Miss Roxy Andrews. Being the lip sync icon that she is, uh, they did bring her back on season five as a lip sync assassin where she lip synced and beat Miss Cracker. Now, Roxy Andrews has a lot going for her. First of all, she's one of those OG queens and has been in the game for a very long time. Let's also not forget that Roxy is a Miss Continental Plus winner. So she does come from the pageant circuit and she's got all of that going on. 
So not only is she an OG, but she is definitely a polished queen. She is definitely coming into this as a fan favorite and someone that people are really looking forward to. Now, although I haven't heard necessarily any rumors about her being asked back on previous seasons, I'm sure they've been asking her for a while. And I think that the only reason she did this is because it is a non-elimination. She can come in, show everything that she's got and doesn't have to play the villain card, which we know she doesn't necessarily like. All in all, this is something such a big get and such a big name. I am so excited for her and I can't wait to see her on my screen one more time. Next up from season 11, we have Miss Congeniality herself, Miss Nina West. Now Nina West on her original season had two maxi challenge wins and one mini challenge win. She was in the bottom one time where she lost her lip sync coming in at sixth place. Now, although Miss uh, Nina West is only came in at sixth place, let's not sleep on her. She is a powerhouse competitor. Let's not forget that this queen has over 20 years of experience in the game. She was even crowned in 2008 Entertainer of the Year. So she is an OG queen like I've never seen her before. She was doing drag before drag was even cool and before Drag Race was even a thing. I'm glad that she got her dues on Drag Race, but I think that people are sleeping on her and she's gonna have a lot more to show and come back with a vengeance. Since leaving the show, it's been hard to find info a lot of information about her, but you know she is sort of like blessed in books. She is not necessarily a social media queen that likes to, you know, tell you all about it, but we do know that she was on Broadway for a little bit and also producing her own shows. All in all, I think this is a very interesting person to put in the mix very different drag styles than some of the other queens. And I think that that is sort of needed on an all-stars cast. We need some like highs and lows. We need some moments. We need some diversity in the drag scene. So I am glad to see her come into it. I'm very curious what kind of glow up she's gonna have on the season. And I'm very excited to see what she will look like. I hope she sticks to her aesthetic, uh, but just elevates it just that little bit more. And I hope that she gets the appreciation she didn't necessarily get on her original season. All in all, I'm super excited to see her on this list and let's see what she has to offer. Next up from Las Vegas, we have Chanel. Now Chanel also competed two times on the show. The first time we saw Chanel was on season one where she had zero maxi challenge wins and zero mini challenge wins. She was also on the bottom two times, but ended up placing in fourth place. The second time she competed was on the train wreck that was All Stars 1. She was a teammate with Chad Michaels, who, spoiler, went on to win that season. They had three maxi challenge wins and zero mini challenges. Chanel was in the bottom one time and ended up coming in third slash fourth place. Since then, we have seen her back on Drag Race. She came back twice on All Stars 8, once as a lip sync assassin, uh, where she ended up beating Jimbo. And then we also saw her come back on All Stars 8 with the walk arounds with Raven. So like, why was Chanel there? But whatever, give her her moment. Since then, Chanel's been always one of those working Vegas girls all the time. She recently went sort of viral with this infamous Vegas scandal that was all over TikTok and Instagram. Long story short, she was accused of stealing money from a patron and it all blew up online. It was a little bit of a mess, but you know what they say, there's no such thing as bad publicity because that awful situation brought her back into the spotlight. All in all, this is gonna be interesting because Chanel is one of those OG queens and the show has changed so, so much over the years. So I'm very curious if she's gonna be able to keep up. If anybody is gonna keep up, I think it is gonna be Chanel. I was actually surprised to see that Chanel didn't come back on an earlier season. I was fully expecting her before some of the other queens that were asked back. So I'm glad she's coming back. But because this is a non-elimination season, we are getting a lot of powerhouse players. So her coming back on this season might be that much more difficult to win. But who knows? And let's see how things go. All in all, I'm excited to see her. I'm excited to see some OG queens in there. Although this has got the non-elimination format, this better not be as boring as All-Star 7. And seeing Chanel on here makes me think that it will not be. And I hope she brings the drama, mama. And finally, we have the Puerto Rican queen herself, daughter to Miss Alexis Mateo. We have Vanessa Vanjie Mateo. Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Oh, wasn't that iconic? For those of you who do not know Miss Vanjie, have you been sleeping on a rock? 
because this bitch has been everywhere. You know how I said some of the other queens were everywhere? Nobody has been more places than Miss Vanji. Miss Vanji competed two times, once on season 10 and once on season 11. On season 10, she was infamously kicked out first, but she was so iconic with her exit line that they decided to bring her back for season 11. On season 11, she did a little bit better, getting zero maxi challenge wins, one mini challenge wins, and three bottom placements. She eventually placed in fifth place, but she was already iconic before coming on the show. Since being on the show, we have seen Miss Vanjie everywhere. She made a cameo on AJ in The Queen. She was on RuPaul's a Super Celebrity Secret Drag Race or whatever that show was called. She was then a guest judge on Canada's Drag Race season three. She was a lip sync assassin on season five. She was part of the original cast of the Drag Race residency in Vegas and she was on the Drag Race review show. And if you don't even watch Drag Race, she was even on All Star Show. You know the sh show where they put a whole bunch of contestants from all of the shores, Jersey Shore, Jordy Shore, into a house and make them compete. Yeah, Ms. Vanjie wasn't even on a shore show and was invited to All-Star Show. That's how iconic Ms. Vanjie is. She is definitely a fan favorite. People are definitely have been asking her to come back for a very long time, uh, even though she's already done two seasons. People are gonna be gagged when they see her. And I hope that with all of these years away from the show that she's been able to like, just step it up and bring the fashion. When she came back on season 11 originally, it was back to back. People were expecting her to win, but she wasn't able to bring the goods. I hope this time she comes in and she comes in hard because we all know that she is a star and she definitely has winner written all over her. All in all, I'm super excited for this one and I can't wait to see what she has to bring. Y'all, that is it for the cast. There's so many queens on here that I think are pretty iconic. I love that some people are getting second chances. I love that they're bringing some old school queens. I love that they're also bringing some fan favorites. Personally, I have no idea who I am voting for. I think it would be iconic if uh, Gottmik wins. I also think that Roxy Andrews has had such a glow up and would be a great uh, representation for the show because everybody loves and knows her. But I also love that Miss Vanji is there. She is the breakaway star. I think that she might even have like a Trixie Mattel sort of edit where she might not be the front runner the whole time, but she could end up coming in and winning the show. All in all, the Queens have a lot of competition and I'm really excited to see what is going to happen. Who are you excited to see on this cast? Let me know in the comments down below. I do read all of them and do try to write back to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next episodes. Just click on one of these following videos. Goodbye.